Welcome back, friends. Today's conversation is a conversation. We're welcoming uh, Rachel Middleton onto the YouTube channel. You guys have seen her before. She's been in a couple of the lives that we've been doing. Rachel's a part of our mentorship group and provides a tremendous amount of value. So Rachel is a mental projector, 6'2 mental projector on the left angle cross of individualism. And as we have this conversation, you guys will definitely notice uh, Rachel's individualism and how it shines in the world. So we're just here to have an open conversation and play in the world of what it, what it really feels like and um, how navigating as a projector a mental projector in, in this uh, time that we're in. How does that look, feel, and uh, you know, how do we notice it and recognize it? So welcome, Rachel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me and for having this conversation. And, um, and also for everything that you've given me human design wise, it's such an amazing thing to be able to be a part of the mentorship. I, uh, I just, I, my ability to, learn human design and study human design and then also really like work my mental projector muscles was so increased by the mentorship oh my god yeah because it's uh that the thing that i really have been understanding about being a projector what makes us so different than the other types is how like interested we are in other people and deeply like fascinated by the other and i used to think that everybody was like that I think that everybody, well, I know because I'm a six line, I have that bias thing where I think everybody thinks like I think, like uh, until I'm, I mean, like it's, it's an unconscious bias that like, I assume just because I'm interested in human design, everybody thinks it's cool. Or just because I know about this, everyone knows about it. Um, but uh, of course I know that's not really true, but I forget about that and think that, you know, everybody, I, I, I don't know if everyone does that or not, but um, I for sure was guilty of it. So when I realized that, oh yeah, like only a small, small portion of us are really totally fixated on other people. <laughs> like, like everybody else is just totally fucking do. Oh, oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Doing their own, you know, totally just, uh, be themselves. Um, oh God, did I ruin anything just now? <laughs> no, no, you're all good. You're all good. Being myself. Um... So I, I'm going to just share your, ooh, where did my chart, there we go. I'm going to just share your chart here, just so people can get a visual of it as well. Um, I think that's important as we have this conversation. <clears throat> so here's what's really interesting in my view as well um, with you, Rachel, is this um, left variable that's in the, envir or the environment too, right? So... You're designed to be observed and 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 see um, like you're navigating and people are watching you. And because you're navigating through systems and mastery of systems, you're like, well, of course, everybody is interested in mastering systems and astrology and and human design. So it's it's interesting to to watch that um, that variable. And as you move along and 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 walk with your people. They're gonna they're gonna recognize and notice how important all of this, all of these systems are going to be to us. That's what I believe. Yeah, that's really interesting. I was just reading about um, what it says about no no inner authority, outer authority in uh, the human design read the differentiation science of differentiation book. This book, I was just yeah. reading it. About it there's just two little paragraphs in there that's the thing when you discover human design and you discover you're a mental projector you're like then discover that there's like very little information out there about your small percentage like weirdo authority type so um that was i think the biggest uh stumbling block for me early on not that it like dissuaded me from human design i was totally hook line and sinker in on human design but i was like personally struggling a lot with the no inner authority thing I was like wow this is like what does this mean like what like what's this about like there's got to be some reason that there would be like one weird type that doesn't have an inner authority and I'm like oh so 
oh, I just wanted to coattail ride the reflector thing for at, at first. Like, oh, oh, yeah, it's like reflectors. And then it's like not actually exactly like reflectors. Um, and then I was like, well, what is that then about? Like, why would we be super open? So like for people that are that don't already know, I don't want to assume that everybody knows this. This is me assuming everybody knows what a mental projector even is. But um, it's so the one thing that all mental projectors have in common is they have a defined Ajna. That's that's why they call us mental projectors, I think, because our, our Ajna has to be defined. It can be connected to the head and the throat or just one or the other. Like in my case, it's just the Ajna to the throat. I have a mental projector friend that is all three. And then I have another couple mental projector friends that don't have the throat and it's just the head and the Ajna. But in every case, it's always going to be the Ajna. And everybody knows that the Ajna, the mind, can't be your authority, right? So guess what? Neither can the head and neither can the throat. So that's why we're the type that has no inner authority because we can't possibly have definition in any of the centers that could be authority centers and still be a mental projector. <clears throat> so like that's technically like the, the definition of why we have no inner authority. But but like I was always like, well, what is that even about then? Like, what is the purpose of us like being around here, like having this weird definition and um, what are we supposed to do with it? Like, you know, it's it's like the but the thing is, is that because we don't have an inner authority we do have to tap in to our environment and get the signals based on what to do more based on the outside information than on inside information it's like it's not because i feel so strongly that i'm going to do something it's because i've assessed all the factors using my mind because it's in my definition and it's the only thing i've got and i can't not use it i've assessed the situation and it's actually not me probably going to even make the decision, but the decision is going to be made by all of these factors. That's why I'm interested in looking at them. Um, I've talked to some other mental projectors about this, and it was very freeing for me on a certain level to realize that I wasn't um, like everybody else with having a very strong inner authority because I hate making decisions personally. Like I don't even like going to the restaurant and having to order off the menu. If the menu has a lot of choices i'm like oh god like i can't handle it it's like you know it's 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 paralyzing because because i don't have a consistent and easy and reliable way to do that and also like people that that have authority even if it's a, a weird authority like the emotional have to wait out a wave there's something reliable there inside them that they can trust whereas to me i'm like it's not that i don't trust myself it's that there's nothing saying loudly clearly, regularly, all the time, the same thing. So um, it changes based on the situation, like circumstances alter cases is one of my mottos, because it's absolutely true. Like, um, so, and I take it, it like, and it's actually much more important, the people that are in my environment, and how what their decision making is saying to me than my own. And so that to, to become feeling like, I'm okay with that. And everybody is functioning in a way that's healthy that way. It took some time for me to, to get, you know, because it's like, well, does that just mean that I'm completely like giving my authority over to like all these other people in my environment? And kind of, I am like in a certain capacity, but it's not like, it's not like it sounds. It's like, I'm taking into account my emotional projector, three-year-olds, authority and my splenic projector six-year-olds authority and my parents who are generators old authority and my my partner's authority who's a generator and I'm and I'm balancing and I'm weighing and I'm just going through the field that all those things create in my environment because that's why I live within my home so I don't know it's it's still like not 100% clear to me the best way for me to manage it and to work with it but it's like I, i'm practicing it and it takes projectors some practice to figure it out anyway so even if they have a clear authority and that's in there right yeah so in saying that um how raw had explained it was really like you guys are here to like soundboard off of your environment and 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 really like hear yourself speak the the decision based off of what you're hearing yourself, like basically rebound off of someone. 
And the other the other aspect he talked about, and and I know we've touched a lot on this uh, as well, Rachel, is your cognition of outer vision. So can you play around with that soundboarding and outer vision? Is there something there that you can 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 help solidify for our our mental projectors? So yes, um, so I always say that like it's not just the people in the environment that I can soundboard with, but it's the environment itself too. And for, um, for years, I was um, an organic farmer on the farm and was constantly working with plants and um, getting a lot of feedback from my environment directly. Um, a lot of it through my outer vision too. Like I, I would look at plants and see what was going on with them. And it was a communication happening. Um, they say for environmental projectors, like get to know as much as you possibly can about your environment, whatever that is. And so on the on, in a farming situation, in a plant situation, and I know several other mental projectors that are really into herbalism or, or have this really strong, deep connection with plants and the environment or and astrology, which is another factor, a greater factor in the environment. Um, so. And I am constantly seeing like seeing signs and things in my environment that are kind of like almost like inside jokes back to me, like echoing something that I've been thinking about or wondering about. I'll get a message like and it's totally flaky, right? It's the most flaky of all like <laughs> the authorities, but it is. It's like for me, like um, one of the ways that I experience it. And I've said this before in the mentorship that I have like extreme pareidolia which is seeing faces and all kinds of weird stuff like a french toast pattern or whatever like that and they have expressions of emotions on them always they're like some kind of like it's a hilarious there's there's many people that see these things too it's not just me actually everybody has a capacity too but um so all sorts of ways my environment in every aspect of it like if we the people that believe we're living in like a hologram and that everything's like secretly that's kind of how it feels to me to, that's kind of feels like it's the truth um and, and and like if I really get into it then all of it kind of can can be alive and speak back to me and and I am not doing any kind of drugs it's completely just this you know just my imagination if whatever I don't know so yeah I've said too much no no you haven't no that totally makes sense because um and because you have the, the 5611, what's what's fascinating to me is like what what I hear out of you is the story and it's always the story. So there's no short answer because it's abstract. It's very experiential, right? So it's very interesting to to hear you say that is that like you're seeing the faces, but those faces have an emotion. Well, of course, because you're you're abstract, right? And you, you see the vision of it, and then you actually tap into the emotionality and, and the abstract process of it. So uh, continue to play in there if you if if you want to share with us. <laughs> well, there's this, um, there's actually a, a, like, a, oh my gosh, oh, a Quora group where they post pictures where people that have this really strong, like, uh, pareidolia post pictures of things that they catch in the environment it's hilarious. Like it makes me laugh so hard when I, when I, when I go there. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a kind of real thing. Um, the, the problem is that like, mo uh, if I ever show somebody like, like, Oh my God, do you see that face? Even if they see it, they're not going to like put any stock into it. Like, can you imagine like, instead of having your sacral authority looking for stuff like that to like help you, like guide you, it's like, Oh my God. So it's super important that, um, mental projectors have really good relationships in their life with people that they trust not only to help like guide and position themselves right and be open to their interaction with the projector for whatever reason there is a mutual re relationship but that they would also be considerate of the projector's like needs and whatever because the, a projector is likely to not be considering those things you know very quick to just ignore the self and to focus completely focus and absorb like that's the number one thing about being a projector that I immediately identified with is the focused and absorbed aura 
It's like, I can't even help it. And it's why I avoid a lot of things a lot of the time, because I don't want to focus and absorb on it. And so I barrier like, like blind and projectors can be that way. They can have like blinders on and just be focusing in on what they're focusing in on. And so, um, you can forget yourself completely, uh, if you're not in a, in an environment or a situation which considers you and remembers you. And that's when bitterness sets in, you know, bitterness doesn't happen overnight. It takes a long time. Usually just like success doesn't happen overnight. So projectors have like a more long-term strategy, a more long-term, uh, it takes a longer time for them to get the success or to really build that depth of bitterness that they're capable of. <laughs> Um, so what would you say um, for success, now that you touched on that, what would you say that feeling is for you and 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 what kind of um, guidance would you have for your other projectors to tap into what success means for them? Not for, you know, I, I, I recognize that you're you're not on social media. However, social media is pitted with this uh, collective um, idea of what success is right uh, fast cars fancy shoes um you know all of these like grandiose things which are not bad but that's not success for you know probably 80 percent of the people are not interested in that so what is, what is success for you what is that sensation how do you recognize it in your cellular structure and then what how would you guide other projectors on beginning to tap into that sensation. It's really a, a good thing to meditate about and to think on because, um, so I always start by asking people to go back in their timeline and remember successes that they've already had and to to, to relive them and to, to see if they notice anything, similarities. Um, and for myself, um, and you know, there's long-term successes and then there's also like, just like the generator can get satisfaction from putting together a puzzle or like building something. And then they can also really get a, build a business. And that's a much longer term, uh, frustration or satisfaction payoff. But so for like, I can have a success by making an excellent meal. Like success is when I make myself or somebody else something perfect to eat, like perfect for them, you know? So it's like, it's not like, oh, I'm, I am a good cook, but it's not, it's like when I recognize what they like, how they like it, and it can be simple as like cooking an egg for myself or for somebody else that it's like, and so success means that I had a vision in my mind of how I wanted things to go extremely well. And I manifested it and made it happen. And mm -hmm. it usually involves like, um a lot of moving parts in other people if it's a longer term thing like like I directed a play when I was in college and it was a huge success and so like um it was so much fun to every step of the way like it's always me doing something that I really like um when I'm successful and usually there's other people involved usually I've been recognized and said like somebody be like hey will you make me breakfast like I mean that's a small level of like really mundane recognition but and and my attitude about it would be like absolutely I would love to now if I felt like absolutely not no thank you you know it wouldn't be that way there's things people could ask me and I would feel like no I don't want to clean and organize the pantry right now like no I can't wouldn't be able to successfully probably do that either because I don't have the the like I have two little kids running around sabotaging and so it wouldn't be easy for me to do that but like the other thing is that like success is easy when it happens it's like people think success is hard and that you have to work forever to be successful and maybe that is true for generators who it's not their signature for you know but as a projector when I'm successful it's fun and it's exactly like me and my wheelhouse and everybody and everything that I need to make the thing happen appears and it's like the environment lines up to support it and it's like there's no resistance so it's like um it feels great it feels like the best thing in the world to be successful and it's it's not ever like a solitary thing it's you almost always like a shared situation for the for the projector I think um, but I don't know for sure. And then, you know, on the bitterness side of things, it's like, it's not just when things go bad, you know, but that is part of it. It's like, you know, that could be 
or or the projector keeps trying to do things and it's just resistance 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 failure 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 and um so yeah it's, it, that can turn to sour grapes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when you're talking about um let's go like the success and, and the bitterness like for for you that recognition you're like oh yeah when when my kids recognize that I can feed them a really nice meal and they and they and they call that out as a six two they call that 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 process out of you um what what have you noticed because again abstract is such a big part of who you are also your individualism of course because you're here on that individual uh process but what have you noticed or recognized around the words notice and recognize? What are those things that people like, how do they, how do they articulate that they're noticing you? How do they articulate, articulate that they are recognizing you inside of that invitation? Is that something that you've kind of dissected? Um, you know what? It's like when somebody recognizes me, I'm always surprised. I got to tell you that. Like, mm -hmm. it's weird. Probably because, um, I don't know, maybe my second line or something like that. But when, like, if somebody calls me out for being talented in a certain kind of capacity, it always kind of shocks me. And, like, I, like, I, like, kind of freeze and I'm, um, like, I mean, I'm working on, on getting better about it, but, but I'm just being honest, like, you know, so, mm -hmm. I mean, if, unless it's something that it's like super obvious to me, like, of course, I'm really good at that. And, you know, like editing or something lame, you know, but if somebody gives me like a compliment about something that, um, that I'm either not totally like hundred percent solid as a mastery system yet, or a skill set like music is a perfect example of that. Like I am just like a total second line tinker around, don't want to take lessons, musician, you know, but I love it. I love to play around. And so like if somebody who I respect that's a musician because of is like, wow, you're actually really naturally talented musician. And I'm, I'm like shocked. And I'm also like, really like, it's like a feeling of honor, honestly. You're like, wow. I mean, it's so like, it's like to be recognized isn't like it's not like an ego boost so totally it is it could be but it's it's like a it's like oh my god this person is totally looking at me right now and that's the other way i notice people will recognize me is they'll see something that i'm doing it'll be very specific and it's something that they want me to help them do too or something like that and then they'll immediately it's usually a, sac a sacral generator immediately ask me and invite me to do something. So it, there's just like this palpable feeling of like what it, how it feels to be recognized. It's honestly like how it feels after it happens, you know, it's like, and I'm never expecting it. I am honestly like always caught off guard, which is funny right now that I'm even thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of cute, right? Because the left angle cross of individualism, you have shock that is a part of the design, right? The design sun. So that shock is, it's its right there. It's available all the time uh, when you're, when you're, when you're noticed and you're designed to um, take that and adapt to it, right? Take it and, and, you know, see the beauty of it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So fun. With the 51, I always like to remind people because it is kind of one of those scary gates, the shock. Um, and I have it as my design, Sun and Mars, I think, and Venus, all designs. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. When I discovered that, I was like, oh, no. But then, um, you know, shocking good things can happen, too, is the other thing people do not like to talk about with the 51, but they absolutely can. And that's happened to me. Like, I've had shocks of, like... Uh, I think I like the word surprise better than shock. <laughs> Although they are different. Like they really are different. We're, we're being euphemistic sometimes when we say surprise, if it's really a shock, like we, so, you know, I, I work a lot with new mothers and pregnant and all kinds of maternal mental health. And a lot of times people are like, yeah, it was a surprise pregnancy. And I'm like, a shock? 
<laughs> you know, they're like, yeah, I was just totally shocking. And I'm like, oh, I know. Yeah, it, it, it is. And if you were trying for it, it, IVF, it's still a shock. So that's another example of the way that like I am constantly dealing with people who are going through what is considered normative shock and trauma, which is having a baby. So, uh, yeah, and it transforms the life and initiates you into a totally new 50 51 25 channel so it's really it's intense yeah there's a lot of things like that in life that are actually really um mundane that every human being kind of experiences you know losing a, a parent or, or some, you know it's like every to everybody goes through these i think sometimes that 51 25 it's such a i'm fascinated by that channel um it's like it's so mundane as well as like highly mystical like you know the things that give us the, the most like intense experiences are are in our most intimate like mundane lives and in relationships it's crazy mm -hmm. yeah. yeah totally agree yeah I see that 51 25 it's like that um you know the fool that just takes the leap into innocently recognizing that there is something outside of the tribe there's something outside of the tribe and it's individualism. Yeah, love it. So if you were to, to play around um, and share with us the, the six line process, and I know that you're still on the roof, you haven't uh, jumped off the roof yet, but in that process of that first 30 years and now being on the roof as a six, is there anything that you could share in that um, that you'd like to, to bring out to the audience? Yeah, it's um, uh, the six the six line thing was was really fascinating for me too because it was obviously so I started learning human design. I had already been on the roof for a long time. Um, I started studying astrology pre my Saturn return. I was like twenty three, I think, when I started studying astrology. Um, and so I had like the Saturn return is twenty eight thirty. That's when the third line phase ends. So I had that whole time where I was looking forward to the Saturn return as an astrology student and um, waiting for that. But when the Saturn return really did happen and I went up onto the roof, that was marked like that was a that that even like looking in retrospect at um, my life pre Saturn return and then post being like characterized by that aloofness like I in the third line phase it's so much action like it's so uh, you know you're one three so like <laughs> the, third, the third line is like is completely um out there and doing things and making mistakes and tons of tons of action and then the six is just like so withdrawn from all of that and it's usually kind of um dramatic like transition and getting used to it like I'm still getting used to, to it um as far as like um how, and then I had a bunch of kids up here on the roof too so I have a 19 year old then and from my first marriage which I got divorced in my third line fate I got married had a baby got divorced all before my Saturn return and then uh once I got up on the roof with my partner who is also a six three uh, we we got together around our Saturn returns, went on the roof together, had a couple babies, and then so it's been it's been fun um, to to <laughs> to be stuck on the roof in a generational family lockdown. Uh, thanks post COVID, but uh, I've been um, so grateful to be on the roof during the time of like Zoom and being able to still have Valley's contact with people. Um, that's really saved my life, I think. Because I don't know how I would have been able to. So I, I kept like, how, what did I do on the roof? The same thing I always imagined I would do if I went to prison. Study, 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 you know. <laughs> and um, and just take care of, of my family doing that, like the, the grind of life, which is everybody has to do it no matter what. Right. So, yeah. But I, I have no idea what it's going to be like when I come down off the roof. But uh, and, and that will be post 2027. So I'm just enjoying, I, I, you know what? I'm resigned to being on the roof at this point. Like, I'm not trying to jump down anymore. Like, I'm not like, I'm not hating on it. And I'm actually embracing it and realizing that this is going to be like a very um, long, like it's 20 years or whatever, 21 years. But this is going to be a very 
crucial chapter in my life and it's going to be really different than the rest of it most likely so i'm just trying to make the most of it as much as possible because it's you know it is like a little time out in a way yeah. to mm -hmm. uh, just not and i think that the six line gets accused of being you know checked out and aloof but um and i guess we are you know i'd say i am checked out <laughs> from many things but the things that i'm not checked out from i'm totally checked into it's not like I'm checked out from everything in the entire universe. It's just 99% of the universe that I'm checked out from. And that 1%, I'm totally checked in. Checked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and you know, I'm, I'm looking at your line values and you have seven first lines and eight six lines and, and no fourth lines. You do have a couple fourth colors or uh, fourth tones. So it's interesting to, um, you know, to recognize um, that first 30 years when you guys are operating, whether it, it doesn't matter any six line is operating like this, you're operating this at third line. I will tell you that Rachel's resume for the first 30 years of her life is absolutely insane. Like this girl's like, oh, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. She tested it all. And what I love is now you're on the roof and it's like now, like, how I see that roof face from, from, from down here, still in this third line. It's like, you guys are like refining what it is for, um, for you to be prepared for that uncertainty. Cause that too has such a deep uncertainty built into it because you, you never know what is going to come like along the shore. Um, so six twos, I, I, I feel that, like there's this, just this refinement, like what are you gonna focus in on? Out of all of that experience, it's like now what is it that you're just gonna naturally allow to come through you? Would you agree on that? Would you agree that that is? Yeah, absolutely. And it's like almost like um, you only can bring a small amount of stuff up on the roof with you. It's yeah. like, only to, it's kind of like a Noah's Ark situation too. It's like the most important. I I don't know if this is a six line thing, but my favorite game always has been like, okay, you're going to a desert island. You can only take five things. What is it going to be? Or you can only eat five things for the rest of your life. What is it going to be? Or it's like, um, it's really narrowing down, narrowing down. What, what's the most important? What's super foundational? I guess, yeah, it's all those first lines. Um, I am, a, I am a sucker for a first line, like, foundational like when I study things like I'll take the basic courses again and again and again and again I just love it I just love those elementary they're very mystical they're extreme the reason why the first line takes 25 years to study the basics is because that's really how long it takes to study the basics of any kind of thing and really understand what they mean on like multiple levels you know it's not so clear like it's like anything that a first line is getting a foundational thing in it's like a projector it's mastery really i think like the line is, is very like a projector you know in that way I would, I would agree with that. and then they also like a projector can be a great outer authority you know um for other people because they have all that pure knowledge it was just it, for the sake of the knowing and the, the solidity of that foundation is the reason why it's like the projector doesn't have if, if the circumstances are good a lot of personal vested weird interest in guiding another person they're completely focusing on not what would be good in an in, in any kind of situation but for this situation for this person what is good what is good what does this person value and need and want not like me but imposing my values on a situation so um yeah sidetrack mm -hmm. there but thing about the roof um yeah it's what I've been doing on the roof too is just like letting go of tremendous amounts of things that aren't like like pivotal and necessary and 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 then taking all of that energy and focus going super hard onto the things that either are like my, I need to be like focusing on like raising young children like that's like my projector work for the most part right now, my guidance is, is for the most, most of my hours of my day focused totally on my family because I have a young growing family. But um, 
but you know, for the sake of my mental sanity, I still have to study human design and, but human design has helped me so much to serve as a mother and, mm -hmm. you know, as a member in my family and stuff like that, because, um, it's given me such a great, like projectors don't get as much like personal kicks out of using their strategy and authority, but we get so much like edge out of being able to help and do everything. It what really balances out. You see why, you, you know, there's a lot more projectors, I think, interested in human design that like per capita or whatever. It's like, why, mm -hmm. why are we so interested in it? Because it works. Mm -hmm. You know, that it yeah. really helps. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, the system is so mechanical that when you guys tap into that, like you can, you totally tap into the mechanics. You can tap into the energetics. Um, and it's something to master. And because you guys are designed to really master human behavior, because 70% of us are behaving um, in a frustrated, um, destructive manner, that when you guys can tap into to the mechanics of us, uh, I meaning generators and manifesting generators, and and guide that energy back to satisfaction and generative energy, like there's no better system in in the entire world. Of course, I'm biased as well than human design because it's so freaking mechanical, right? It takes the body and it takes the personality into into consideration, and most of us are running around. Um, you know, psychologically destroying ourselves, trying to get to a space that aren't isn't designed for us. And that's what I think is the mastery of of you guys is to tap into that mechanics and and really truly just guide it to, to that place of satisfaction. I think it's interesting that the projector as an energy type is new. It's like the new kid on the block. And when projectors came on the scene, Uranus related, like similar discovery time period. Um, and then also like that we're supposed to be kind of the new leadership versus the old manifestor hierarchical ruling things over the generators. So why we're here for the generators is to help, I feel like, um, humanity transition from being 100% top down, like manifestors rule the world and everybody else has to serve the will of the manifestor and what has been the chosen by the, but where we're at as a, as humanity, we, we've, we've, di we've, the manifestor did perfect work. Like everybody's always like, oh, the cross planning was so horrible. I'm like, it was a great success. Are you kidding? It was so successful. Like, this is my projector recognition, like recognize, Real, recognize real. Cross of planning was a success as far as the cross of planning's goals were concerned, right? Yeah. But so now, when we're going to be switching to a place where people, the large majority of which, and the ones that we all are surviving on the backs of generators, all of us, including manifestors, are surviving on the backs of generators' creative, generative work in the world. Um, it's uh, there's there needs to be an impartial guide like the projector to look in and to tell each give each other give each generator that encouragement to make the switch over to looking inside and saying what do i need to do with my energy versus like how can i get paid to use my energy sell my time sell my this sell my that and like the fact is you guys actually already know everything it's super easy to guide generators really because they have their own internal guidance system and all you have to do is familiarize them with that it's so much easier than having to tell people what to do all the time than to tell people how to figure out what to do all the time whether you're there or not that's what I hated about like doing a lot of counseling work is people would get like always wanting to petition the oracle again and again and again it's like oh my god all right let me like teach you how to do this for yourself because I don't have time for this like <laughs> and yes. neither do like you need to be able to make split second decisions and feel confident in yourself. And that's what human design, like I've seen it happen for so many people. The, the feedback and the response mechanism is a real palpable thing as well. And so it's great, you know, it's fast and it's what we need right now in our modern stage of things to help us. I think all of us, no matter what our 
circuitry or whatever it is to make this shift where um you know energy and power and all of that is different now we're gonna have to use it in a different way which we're we're set it up we're set up for it too like it's not like we don't have to think about how to do it mentally we just have to respond to it correctly mm -hmm. yeah and and i i you know like we can't change what, what the cross of planning did and of course it was perfect like created the industrial revolution you know it brought us to this place where you know i think that humans still work hard um, however, when the machines come along, then we didn't have to work as hard. We could work differently. And I think that's so important for uh, the generator and the manifesting generator is to actually work differently, to take advantage of the tools so that we don't have to be frustrated. I feel like, um, I know this is a weird opinion, but I feel like where we're at as a species, humanity right now is highly privileged to the point where we've earned this ability to be able to think about what we would even want to do as an individual in this lifetime. It's like, yes. it's amazingly, uh, like when you look back at the history of people, even in your own family generations, mm -hmm. like the amount of toil and the amount of just suffering that they had to endure just to, to survive was, mm -hmm. was, was large scale in comparison to what it is now. So I think because we've experienced such a dramatic, quick evolution that it's hard for us to appreciate it. Although we do have the value of historical retrospective record to be able to see a lot of it. So, um, you know, I think like, in the beginning, I was like, oh, what am I going to do about 2027? And now I'm like, I don't even give a shit at all about 2027. I just want to like really embrace like what is happening right now, because this is such a like when 2027 happens, I know I'm going to be wishing that I had taken advantage of certain things about this time period that are no longer available to me. I'm not saying it's going to be worse than or better or whatever, but I know that there are unique things about right now that are never going to come again on the earth and that are at their peak of development. And in some ways, human beings are one of those things. I know everybody's like, oh, we're such a failure. And I can, as a projector, identify and relate to that level of bitterness looking at humanity. But I also see that we've been amazingly successful in so many ways. You know, it's just that, you know, it's a mixed bag. That's life, you yes. know, that's just who it is to be a person and to be on the earth with a bunch of us. Mm -hmm. no. No. Yep. and and you know your left angle cross of individualism like what else are you going to do but be here right at this moment right now that's that that's your whole um that's where you get to really shine to people and show to people it's like you know we can totally stress about the future we can totally worry about um where we're going or what we're doing but if we're not present right now we're missing out we're missing out on the moment. Yeah. And for all of the sacral beings, that is the place where they're going to be in their power position to, to navigate to the future is from that present yeah. moment. So yeah. even if you have the emotional authority as well, that's that defined sacral is always so... I feel like, you know, the empowerment that, that generators can have in the now is something that I actually like sidle up to. I do, I like, I feel it, I feel it from them. And it's like, it's amazing. It's so like, I I love that, that you guys have that. Like, it's so beautiful. Like, and I just, um, and I could see why satisfaction is the thing that flows out of really feeling it and experiencing it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that there's opportunities for that no matter what happens, because it's yeah. really, like like I my example with the success being the fret the, the perfectly fried egg, you don't have to make it really complicated to be satisfied and or successful, actually. It's just really it's actually easier to kind of practice on small things like that, you know. But I don't know. Yeah. But you do know. <laughs> um so <laughs> one question I'm gonna ask you now is I'm gonna pull you into um so as an astrologer who found or human design found you or or however that worked, um, I'm, I'm thinking human design found you because you were invited into it. 
So what would you say that really, um, like all the studying that you did with astrology and now coming to design, can you can you just wager those two and just say, you know, like I, I get it, astrology definitely has benefits. And so so help me play around in that. What actually, when you saw design and you looked at it, went, oh yeah, this is the next level of of you know mastery that's available. Well, um, it's like when you fall in love. It's hard to describe, but you de definitely. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it, that's how it was for me uh and that's how i am like if, if something is correct for me with the 1150 say i'm not like logical it's it's come and i have the 39 so you know it's like it's that individual passionate all or nothing type of uh i love you for the rest of my life until i don't like you anymore which is what how i felt about astrology when i first discovered human design i was like what it's not that i didn't think astrology was legitimate because it is one of the synthesis pieces of of human design, but I felt the outdated nature of astrology mm -hmm. so much. And so I, I used to describe human design people, like people would be like, oh, Rachel, what's going on with you? I'd be like, I'm studying something totally new. It's human design. They're like, oh, well, what is it? And I'm like, it's like astrology 2.0. It's like, it's like an updated version of metaphysics. And I'm like, it's not just astrology either. It's I Ching. It's like, so it's like st through my study of astrology, I started studying in 2007. Um, I studied a lot of range of astrology. I studied ancient Hellenistic astrology. I studied modern astrology. I studied vibrational astrology, which is ultra modern. Um, and it's like, they are absolutely all reflect the human beings that created them and the time space that it was created in. So I have gotten a lot of pushback from people in the human design community when I say that Hellenistic and ancient astrology is like, not something I think is valid for the modern person. Um, but uh, because there's this huge popularity with ancient astrology since Pluto was in Capricorn, true. And it was like, and then the Saturn Pluto conjunction, Jupiter and Capricorn, it like peaked. And it's like, it's a, there's, of course, these Saturnian astrologers think that they're the, the great authority and are totally dissing like the modern astrologers that were like, included Uranus and 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 uh, Neptune and Pluto, they kind of fell out of favor. So it's like astrology is always going to be a reflection of humanity, just like human design is a reflection of a human perspective that is influenced by greater sources. And I think it's really interesting that, um, so I feel like the reason why human design is so superior to astrology, like if somebody were, so like my nephew is really interested in astrology and human design and, and he was like wanting to learn astrology. He's in his early thirties and I'm like, Andrew, forget about astrology. Just study human design. He's like, no, no, I really want to do both. I, I like human design too. I'm totally into it, but I also want to learn astrology. I'm like, all right, uh, all right, I can teach you some astrology too, because it is part of the like basic language, the program. That's what I see astrology as now. Now my view of astrology has kind of been not tainted, but like I see the program with different eyes, right? Like where um, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I always knew that it worked like that anyway and had like really heavy sway. But I also think that like where we're at in history, we've earned the privilege to not be seven centered beings anymore, to not be under the Saturnian lifespan of 30 years, to have all kinds of freedom of choice and all kinds of knowledge that we didn't have before. And so um, like I have an air conditioned house. I live in a situ in a place that I shouldn't be able to live in based on my advanced human. Like I live very close to the Everglades. I should be living in a swamp. Uh, it's so um, people have uh, kind, of, kind of gotten too big for their bridges, like where we're at, like with, with, cause we're in such a mental realm, right? Yes. It's mental and astrology is highly mental. So is human design, which is why mental projectors love it. But there's that back door with human design that takes you to the design, to the body, to this other like hardware part of things that was fascinating to me. And so I started experiment and I, the experiment thing hooked me. I was like, uh, what, this is an experiment. Let me just try this out. And because I always like things that are tested with your own personal, you know, that's how astrology works too. People that don't believe in astrology usually haven't done any kind of experimentation with it. Um, 
because it's the program does have an effect. Yeah. So when they mm-hmm. observe astrology with any kind of even scientific, like logical, like they'll see corollaries. There's been so many studies that have proven astrology's validity, but they don't like to admit it. But it's t- it's so so predicting weather, predicting stock market trends, predicting all kinds of things that the collective it's obvious it's not obvious in the individual it's the individual that's the wild card always and so that's why you know human design is great because it's trying to help the individual play that wild card right and so Mm -hmm. that's what what I like about it yeah awesome yeah I definitely I appreciate the decision part of it that like having that as a foundational tool I think everything begins and ends with a decision. And if we're doing it mentally uh, through a collective template that actually isn't us, that's when I think, well, while we're looking at it, right? We're looking at how that mental uh, suffering can really, really take humanity to a place that is just um, very disruptive. And, you know, I just thought of something while you were talking, like, I don't think human beings have ever had so much ability to make decisions in their life as they do right now. Like you were born in the town where you're going to live, your father's job was very, and it's like, so it's like, we receive a huge amount of freedom to make decisions, you know, in a short amount of time. And I think that human design is necessary for us to be able to like, it's hard to make decisions. I told you, I hate it. <laughs> like, I can hardly even do the, the restaurant. But um, it's, it's like, it is crucial, because this is the task before us right now. We don't have to build a world. That's been done for mm-hmm. us. We mm-hmm. have to just mm-hmm. leisure your time and like, being at the heights of human civilization. And it's not just for the kings and queens. It's like, the modern person with their cell phone has more access to information than every person that has ever, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy. So a decision-making is part of human design because that's what we as modern people need guidance to be able to do right now, to decide how to use our free will, right? Not easy. Yeah. Yeah. And as um, you know, that, that background frequency is there and it's in the first line, like we're inundated we're inundated right now with information because that's what the first line does. It's had it's and how many solid foundations are there out there? Well, billions, billions of solid foundations. Um, and that for, for me, the decision-making um, and not complicating it, making it really, really simple and, and leaning into it, I, I think is the only saving grace. And as Ross says, like we have to teach our children right now how to tap into that. Because the the rave, when they come along, they're going to be on a very, you know, it's, it's not going to be every child after 2027. 20, It'll just be a very small fraction of them for, for the first little while. But when they come on board, um, they're going back to the whole, like giving their authority away to the, the, the group, the Penta. So right now is a space where, for humans to survive this this shift as we're moving, it's decision making. Yeah. And the other thing that's so interesting is that the decisions that you make are the the amount of different choices that are there. It's like uh, almost infinite, and yes. and there's so much capacity for people to make change in their life right now. Still. Yes. Um, I don't know if it's going to be like this forever, but it's obviously like this now. And I think it's just, I mean, I even catch myself a lot of times being like, wake up. What are you being so like, like um, ungrateful about? Like how, how much like opportunity and choice and, and like just variety of life is still available for, 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 for everybody. I mean, yeah. to very and I think some something that causes that not the only thing but one of the things that causes how much varying degree of that is available to you is how much you believe that that's true or not right like how mm-hmm. much you ability for um for for your part in how much you make available to yourself you know mentally because we are still living in the mind isn't like it, the mind shouldn't make your decisions, but it is still a part of you that you have to deal with and that you have to use to navigate this plane in a large measure. 
So it's just not the boss, right? It's really the, you know. Yeah, uh, the mind is a tool. Um, again, not for decision making, but like we're still here in the duality, sorting out the this and the that, and we're still here measuring. That's what it's designed for. And then it's also, you know, it's it's a huge part of our of our higher self because it's energetic, right? It's that that mystical place where Ra doesn't really want to go to but it's available to us. So when we can tap into like, what, what is that? You know, I don't know if I really want to say higher self here. I am pointing higher, um, but it's, it's all within us and it's that energetic. And once we can tap into that energetic, remove the mind from decision-making and constantly you should do this, you should do that. And that really is what's holding people back from recognizing there's infinity there for us to move forward. And we can make choices and decisions as we walk. But if that conditioned mind is inserted in the way, that's the resistance. That is the, the friction that's breaking down the body. So lift it out, set it off to its side. It's still going to natter and chatter over here. But it's that deeper connection that really has to help us navigate. Absolutely. And I think it's also interesting that like human design really is the mind body differential of like how it looks at the design, which is the body. And it's also your life versus the mind, which is the personality, which is also the part of us that is, well, I don't want to say eternal, but that like incarnates again and again, that supposedly. So yeah. it's like, it's more mystical part of us that mm -hmm. we're in or conscious contact with which is trippy when you think about that it's like what is this even what is this thing that we're doing in this life this meat suit as you used to say all the time on your videos i loved it so much <laughs> um, but yeah um it's weird it's like it's it's a trip but that but when you use the human design experiment to to just see the results in your life that's when you really start to like think that there's something to that like when my friend who invited me told me about invitations as a strategy, I was like, well, that was another hook. It's like invitations. What? And, it, and then I started to realize that every really good thing that ever happened into my life was through an invitation. And that every time that the invisibility of trying to put myself out there and not being invited, that I experienced that again and again, too. I was like, whoa, yeah, there's totally something to that. That's weird. Let me find out more. I was like, hooked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love it. So thank you so, so much. <laughs> so we've been chatting here for about an hour or so. So if you were to just, and, and I'm not going to say sum it up because that's impossible for the abstract process that you operate in. But if there was just some key takeaways, especially for our um, mental projectors, right? And leaning into uh, like, what is the sounding board? Um, how to recognize uh, maybe a healthy environment. Is there anything there in those two aspects that you could, could lean them towards? Yeah, I would say, um, first of all, it's tr like, if people tell you like, oh, it's not that different. They're, they're not they're, they're It's not true. It is very different to have, um, the type of authority which is the the environmental authority and um there's a reason for it i haven't figured it out yet and any mental projectors that are that have figured it out hit me up and let me know because you guys are all super smart but like there is a reason why you are the type that you are and the authority you are no matter what you are but there's a special reason why the mental projector has to be um in the correct environment there's a the, like i think that i it, it it would sound stupid for me to say that oh there's a greater purpose for us that's why we have to find our our right environment because we need to guide not just not just one person but a whole complex system and an environment like like a lot of the mental projectors that i know are really good at that and it's like it kind of takes a very selfless and a very open type to be able to do that well without it getting twisted with all kinds of personal goals and aspirations and separate responses and whatever. So, um, the, and the sounding board, like 
talk to a lot of people because you'll see how the various shades of things come back. And even somebody that gives you bad advice is giving you great feedback because you register it as bad advice and you know, well, that's not an idea. Like cross that off the list of, of process of elimination. Um, so yeah, um, never underestimate the power of the sounding board to like feedback information, right? It's, it's more information. It's detailed information that is colored with something that's of interest to you. So um, I'll take it all with a grain of salt, hundred percent, you know, and you will know when you're in the right environment and you will know when you're in the wrong environment. That's all I can say. It, it's obvious when you're in the wrong place. It's obvious when you're in the right place. So just pray for those invites. <laughs> yeah. Have the hope yeah. that they're. Yeah. And one thing I would share around environment, like I, I'm, I'm a sacral being, <clears throat> but I do have a totally open G center with nothing there. And I can recognize that when you say that about the proper place, the proper environment, the proper, proper people. Um, will be there when the environment is correct. Like I, through that G center, I feel that like it is for me, I use it as a backup beacon to my sacral. My sacral might have energy and it moves me there. And that totally open G center says, hold on a minute. This isn't actually the right environment. Oh, okay. I have the energy for it, not the right environment. Can we change the environment? Okay. Then, you know, I still have the energy environments different. The interaction can happen. But if I don't change the environment, if I don't suggest or say, you know what, the environment is not right for me, that's when frustration really shows up because it's the wrong person. So um, I, I really love how, like, you know, indicating that like environment is so, is so, so, so important. And I just want to say that it is more important for us than the average for bear. Sure. That sometimes... Yeah. Like, like, and, and get over that sensitivity about yourself and lean into it and like, make it work for you because the same way that like you, you are, are not going to benefit from being an environment that's bad. It's going to be very detrimental for you when you're in the right, with the right people, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so mm -hmm. great. It's going to be good for everybody. So, um, the, it's like the amplification, you're not doing anybody any favors by being in the wrong place with the wrong people. You're really not. And, um, you're, you're keeping the good things that are going to be happening when you get into the right place from not just yourself, but the environment that is going to be happy to receive you and want you to be a part of it as a guiding force, ideally. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well said environment yes all right anything else that you want to leave uh the audience with not really i just want to thank you for this opportunity to come on and talk about this because it's such a um you know as you know being in the mentorship this whole i'm always talking about it <laughs> about like kind of like uh the weirdo authority I think I have a weirdo authority and a weirdo incarnation cross i think i've called my incarnation cross the left angle cross <laughs> before but um yeah so i just love you so much leanne and i appreciate everything about you so thank you that's all i want to say at the end <laughs> <laughs> thank you and i greatly appreciate you um and everything you offer inside the mentorship um your capacity to 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 see a chart and to really converse and 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 bring that out like keynoting it and and sharing that wisdom with people um you are definitely valued inside that mentorship. Uh, people just absolutely recognize your weirdoness and they love it because, you know, they need that. Like we all need that. We all need that capacity for you to guide us. So thank you. Oh, you're super welcome. I can't tell you how nice it is to be in a place where that's appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> priceless, like the MasterCard commercials, priceless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. So if you guys want to connect with Rachel, um, in on the, on the title, there should be the her YouTube channel there um, as well down below in the description. I'll have her website so you can connect with that. So iheartastrology.net and the YouTube channel um, is also iheartastrology, but there's some numbers behind there. So I'm just going to 
tag it here just so that it's easy to click and move on. Um, yeah, so thank you, Rachel, very much for being and here and, and sharing your wisdom and your guidance here with us today. Love it. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Leanne. Awesome. Okay, so I will stop the recording, maybe, if I can find the button. And uh, yeah, uh, there it is.